start. So this was in Mutra. Uh, so you're you're pretty familiar with uh, joints, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, joints was something new to me. I I did not uh, I had not much experience with joints, so I'm I'm really enjoying uh, yeah, these chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I learned about filtering joints uh, this week, uh, where there are two types of joint joints. Uh, any mm -hmm. joints and antigens. So basically, they are, they are not working on variables, but they are working on cases. Uh, and semi join is kind of uh, match uh, or keep observations in X that have a match in Y. And anti join is just the opposite, which is dropping all the observations in X that have a match in Y. So the exercises were interesting too. Um, so the first one was uh, what does it mean for a flight to have? Uh, missing tail numbers. Uh, what do tail numbers that don't have a matching record in planes have in common? Um, so yeah, so what I did here was first identify uh, cases where Uh, yeah. So first, uh, identified cases where the tail numbers were missing, and there are quite a few. And then we tried to understand uh, what is. I mean, the question was, what do these flights have in common? So none of these flights have uh, the tail number. Uh, however, the flight number is there. Uh, so we observe a couple of things. First, I thought that it might be, you know, related to a certain specific career. Uh, so I uh, kind of grouped by career and uh, looked at their numbers. So it seems that most of the uh, flights that don't have a tail number belong to this 9E career and some with United Airways and US, whatever that is. Uh, so this is this is fairly like distributed. We don't have anything that explains 90% of the problem. Uh, however, I also saw that uh, uh, any flight that does not that has a missing value in the tail number uh, does not have a departure time, which means I think probably these are like cancelled flights. They they just didn't like depart from the airport. Maybe I think that's the best that I could think of. Um, the next one was filter flights to show to only show flights with planes that have flown at least 100 flights. Uh, this was straightforward. So first we use the flights data set, uh, count uh, the unique tail numbers and uh, filter anything that has more than 100 counts of tail numbers. So this this means so this is the data set of uh, or the table of uh, flights that have uh, uh, tail numbers that have that have made more than a hundred flights, and then we kind of do a use a semi join to join the flights table with this newly created table based on tail numbers. So this will give us all the flights that have uh, made more than hundred flights. So that was, I had a question here. Uh, so I, I keep on using count, but I see other people use distinct as well to kind of get the unique number of tail numbers. Do you, do you know the difference between count and distinct? Uh, in this context, I'm not able to find the difference. Um, yeah, yeah, you can use count as well. Yeah, I think we can use both, right? So let's do, yeah. uh, so count gave us 4,044 rows. Let's see what distinct, distinct does. Ah, it's the same thing only. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why there are two of them. Oh, it's giving, so count is giving us the number of counts as well. So how many yeah, yeah, yeah. there are. 
and distinct okay, is just, distinct, yeah. it's just yeah. Uh, different. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Nice. Nice, thanks, nice. nice. Do one more thing. This is N E. Okay. Yeah, the order is a bit different as well. I don't know why. Uh, this one starts with something else. This one starts with something else altogether. But that's okay, I guess. Might be. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we need to figure that out. Uh, next, we move to the next question, which was to combine uh, fuel economy. Uh, so there's a fuel economy package which has data on vehicles and the most common vehicles. So the table on vehicles has all of this, you know, ID and make and model, year, class, tr whatever, trans, drive, uh, number of cylinders, perhaps. So all of these information, and then we have the most common models. So we have make and for every make, the most common, I think the five most common models are reported uh, by their numbers and years. So uh, the question was to uh, combine these two data sets to find only records for the most common models. So we do, uh, so we do a, use a semi-join here as well uh, between vehicles and common and use uh, both the make and the model as a uh, key. So that gives us something like this, where we have, uh, for each of, the, each of the makes, we have only the most common mo uh, model, or the rows corresponding to the most common models. The next question was tricky. I don't know how to uh, get that. Maybe we can brainstorm. Uh, so the next one was find 48 hours over the course of the whole year uh, that have the worst delays. Cross-reference it with the weather data. Do you see any patterns? I I don't understand how can we get uh, 48 continuous, like, uh, like a, uh, a stretch of 48 hours and then calculate delays on it. I, I could not understand how that would work. Do you have any ideas? No, actually, first of all, flight data set is so confusing. And I didn't do this uh, this chapter as well. I just stopped in the last chapter. So, yeah, we can either see in the solution book or ask somebody in the group. Yeah, let's let's uh, do that. Do you want to? Let's just look at the solution, actually. Solutions. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. This one was filtering joints. And question, I think, third or fourth. Okay. Let's start by clarifying how I will be measuring the concepts. Okay. This seems like a pretty lengthy thing. What is meant by delay? Okay, delay should be, okay, departure delay. What is meant by worst? Worst delay as the average. Okay, this seems pretty complicated. Okay, uh, what is meant by 48 hours? Okay, uh, this could mean two days a span of 48 hours, yes, or 48 hours that are not necessarily contiguous hours. Okay. Do you want to get into that or we can like look at it separately? This seems pretty... Yeah. ...convoluted. <laughs> <laughs> We move to the next one. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the next one was uh, what does anti join between flights and airports by destination equal to FAA tell you? 
So this is uh, uh, so, so left so X is flights here, Y is airports. So basically, it's kind of uh, trying to look an anti join kind of uh, keeps observations in Y that don't have a match in X. So this would uh, keep observations in the airports data. Uh, that do not have a destination in the flights data, which means, uh, yeah, so first we just run the simple one, which shows about 7,000 cases. But then when we count the number of destinations, we see that there are only four destinations that do not have a match in the, in the, in the airports data set. Uh, and this could be because uh, the airports data set uh, corresponds to uh, airports only within the United States. So anything outside, if the destination is outside US, uh, it won't be there in the airports data. So I think that's what they are, they, these are corresponding to. And similarly, if we like flip the order, that's the next part, what happens when anti-join, uh, you know, you use the airports first and then the flights, so basically it would keep anything in the flights data uh, 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 that that does not have a matching uh, destination in the airport still. So these would be airports that were not the destination uh, of any flights in the flight still. So it's kind of just flipping the order of things. Uh, next is, the last question is, uh, you might expect that there is an implicit relationship between plane and airline, uh, because each plane is flown by a single airline, which makes sense. Uh, confirm or reject this hypothesis using the tools you have learned above. So what they're asking is, uh, so ideally what should happen is every flight should have, uh, sorry, uh, every tail number should have a one-to-one -one match with flight. Uh, sorry, with, with the, uh, Career. Uh, so let's say United Airways is flying a tail number that there should be a one to one match. It should not be the case that one like uh, different tail numbers or different planes uh, or one plane is being kind of flown by a different career that that does not make sense. So what I did first for this was to just select uh, uh, the tail number and the career information from from the flights data set just to make it a little bit shorter. And then we use the distinct function to uh, identify a distinct set of tail number and career. So that gives us about 4,000 unique combinations of tail numbers and careers. And now from this, we can just count the number of uh, individual or, or count the unique number of tail numbers and see how many cases are kind of uh, exceeding are, are more than one. So it's a basically like not a, not a join question, it's kind of a data wrangling question, I think. So yeah, so we see these 18 uh, tail numbers uh, or 18 planes that have more than one career, which is strange. I, I don't know what causes this, but, but yeah, this is, uh, these tail numbers have different careers and we can actually we can look at that. So in 1460Q. Uh, uh, career is there. Yeah, see, there's nine E as, as well as there is EV. I don't know what is going on here. Maybe a data entry error or something. But the same flight has two different values. So yeah, that was that was the end of the relational data chapter. Next, we move on to strings. Yeah, thank you so much, Arnav. Thank you so much.